If you're someone working with a lot of data, you might come across this open source innovation called Delta Lake. In this video, I'm going to explain what and the benefits and also whether you should switch to Delta Lake right now. I'm Riz Ang. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I make videos about data engineering, data platform, data analytics, and in particular with Microsoft Azure. Consider subscribing if you do like my channel and also if you do have comments or questions, leave them down in the comment below. So what is a Delta Lake? Officially from the website, it says that it is an open source project that enabled the lake house architecture on a data lake. All right, so what is it exactly? So first, it's an open source project. So it is not tied to any particular company or vendor. It's enabling a new architecture called a lake house on top of a data lake. Now, lake house is essentially a data lake and a data warehouse combined. And I'll show you a bit of design a little bit later. In my layman terms, though, I think data lake can be summarized in three parts. It's a parquet file on steroid because it's built on top of parquet with additional metadata called a transaction log. And this transaction log essentially captures the states of your of your packet files. If there is an update, it will remember uh, what was the up, what was the state before the update, and also what what happened, uh, what's the state after. Secondly, it is a new design, and like it's mentioned above, it's it's an enabler for this lake house design. And thirdly, it is an extension to Spark and also a data lake. That's essentially what Delta Lake is in my experience. Now, your first question would be, why do you want to adopt it? There, there are three reasons uh, in my experience and my trial using Delta Lake. And my favorite one, which is the number one, is a simpler data pipeline by combining batch and streaming. So with the use of Delta Lake, you don't need to actually have the batch and the stream pipeline separate um, because if you have them separate, there is more complexity and more work really to make sure they, the data, if you're using the same data, they are consistent. So you, um, there is an additional validation involved if you are uh, following a uh, batch and streaming pipeline separately, which is normally called is a Lambda architecture. And just to illustrate this, this is a view from the Delta Lake official website. This is what's most or common data platform design looks like. You have the data source on the left and you have kind of two, two pipelines here. The one at the top is a streaming pipeline. The one in the box here, which is usually uh, sit in a, on a data lake, or it's called cloud object store. And this is the batch pipeline. So you have uh, a hot path, a hot streaming path, a pipe, a pipeline at the top and a slow path, which is a batch pipeline at the bottom. And the thing is, you can see there's additional ETL jobs to make sure that if you are kind of blending the two, you need to make sure there is a validation involved. And then it's all about maintaining data integrity. With the use of Delta Lake though, this is now simpler. So instead of having um, so two lanes, two pipelines, you have one ATL job goes to the uh, cloud object store or data lake. And then within here, you just have one Delta Lake table. And whether that Delta Lake table is going to stream directly or it is updated again into another Delta Lake table and then be consumed by different uh, people. So that is the first and my favorite reason why you want to adopt this Delta Lake. Second reason is because of this new feature called ACID, which stands for Atomic, Consistent, Isolate, Isolate, Isolated and Durable, which is, it's, it's kind of an old feature. It's a good feature in SQL Server that to prevent data corruption. Um, in the event in, in during transaction 
transactional processing on the data, which is basically if you're making changes to the data in SQL Server, there is a an asset feature there to make sure when the system is down or timeout or there is an issue while the transaction is happening, it is pr protected so it can roll back. So with Delta Lake, uh, you get more reliable data pipelines as well because of this asset transaction support. And that's the reason why there is a transaction lock as well uh, with the Delta Lake, which I will show you in, an, in a, sh a short demo a little bit later. And thirdly, it is actually of these additional data processing features as well that why you want to adopt this. Like there's a schema validation and schema enforcement. There is uh, an app, it supports absurd, the leap, and also time travel because the, the Delta Lake uh, captures the states in, in the form of transaction log, you can actually travel uh, to your data in, 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 in older versions. And yeah. So that's one of the main reasons, in my opinion, why you want to adopt it. My final slide is then, should you switch? Unfortunately, the answer is not straightforward. It depends. <laughs> it depends on, in my view, three things. Uh, firstly, it's the people and the team that you're in. If your team or yourself uh, as a data engineer is, is, a, is comfortable using Spark and, and comfortable to actually um, learn this new technology, um, then yeah, you good, you good to switch. But if your team and your people, basically the whole, the whole team is SQL uh, focus uh, engineers, then this could be quite a learning curve. So you might want to switch, but maybe take a slow steps um, doing some POCs first before you actually uh, productionize it. And secondly, it's whether it's the data that you're processing as well. It's uh, it's all are they all currently in maybe CSVs or are they call currently in, in parquets or or in columnar format like maybe um, orc for example or parquet. Now, just bear in mind, Delta Lake is built on top of Parquet. So if you are already using Parquet, then yeah, uh, you can just switch uh, or change the coding a little bit, and then you can start using Delta Lake immediately, uh, provided that your Spark version is compatible, obviously. Um, lastly, though, it also depends on the te technology, meaning the, the platform that you build and uh, where, where that is in the development stage. Uh, is that already been productionized? Is it in live environment, or are you are you actually starting from scratch? Like if you're starting out from scratch, then yeah, by all means, uh, why not use this or try explore this new technology? But again, if you're a if your data platform is mainly a SQL heavy uh, technology, like if you're using maybe uh, Azure Synapse SQL or Azure SQL Data Warehouse or SQL Database, um, then that won't work because this is all basically built on Spark. So just bear that in mind, kind of these people, data and tech that, that you, you have. Now let's move on to a quick demo on how Delta Lake uh, actually can be used and may look like uh, in, in the Data Lake. To give you a quick demo on what Delta Lake and also how Data Lake may look like, and uh, here I am in my Azure portal. I'm showing you my Azure data lake uh, called baby DLDF. This is just, I'm just exploring my data lake and I have a container called raw and some folders. And here I have input CSV and output Delta. Uh, I think at the moment it's blank and I'm just gonna read the CSV files in Databricks and, and, and just create a new file in Delta Lake and to show you uh, what, what it looks like. Uh, firstly, this is my Databricks. I'm just gonna assume here that you already know a bit of Databricks. Uh, if you don't, please leave a comment or question down below. I do, I do plan to create a uh, getting started uh, with the basics on Databricks at some point. But this is my Databricks notebook. I am gonna write in Python and and I already have my data lake 
containers and folders mounted. So I'm going to skip a couple of steps here. My apologies on that one because this is just just want to show you what Delta Lake looks like. Now here, if I just going to run with my clusters already spun up, I've got a couple of um, containers and folders already and I have my draw. I'm just going to go and look at the bottom one here, test Delta. And I'm just going to read this CSV file. So Spark read format csv loading from that format I'm just going to infer the schema also i'm going to set the header as true because there is a header in that csv file and i'm just going to put that into a data frame and if i just read that this is my what my csv file looks like uh, in a data frame now in, to actually create a delta lake instead of if you are familiar with parquet uh, you can just write parquet within the format here instead of doing that you just type delta and i'm i'm doing this example with the batch uh flavor because if you are doing streaming so you you have to change this to write stream instead of instead of write yeah and i'm just going to override and then save that in this location under output delta so if i do that right now runs quite quickly for spark jobs and if i stay if i switch to my explorer i can see there is a new folder so you can see delta lake is actually a bit like parquet it's a folder and within it you see a parquet file uh, and also a delta log this is what i meant by the transaction log inside here you see uh, just remember that it's all zero 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 here and it's 20 digits and it's a JSON file in CRC. Um, this is essentially the, the state uh, of, the, of the file. And you see this parquet file here. And if I give you another example where I rerun this right to the same folder, you'll notice that there was a, a little um, update there instead of the, the version. If I run it again, uh, I'll show you in a bit, but if I just show you, if I refresh this, I end up with now two parquet files because we have a new version of the parquet file because I just wrote that again. And you now see there, instead of just the two files, and now I have four files. The second one, the second two here is just for the new file that I just written. I do that again. Notice here, computed snapshot version for two. There's a something here uh, briefly i think if i just see that not really <laughs> if i go there if i refresh this you see there's another one here this is just the met metadata that captures the state and in the parquet file now there are three of them because i run it kind of three times so yeah so that is just a very quick demo on what delta lake is and how it looks like uh, in the show delta lake and I hope you find that useful. In summary, Delta Lake, it's, a, it's an open source kind of project that allows you to design the lake house architecture. It is a parquet file on steroid. It is uh, kind of combined uh, batch and streaming pipeline design. And also it's built on top of Spark and uh, parquet file. If you like this video, thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. That's it for today. Bye.